Well, we've made it to Friday, and today is the day of the virtual award ceremony for the Lowell Hardin Award. Uh, named in honor of Lowell to recognize international excellence in the College of Agriculture. I'm standing in the College of Agriculture building, which was built in 1908. Uh, for more than a century, it stood here. And for more than a century, individuals in the College of Agriculture have been making a contribution to global agriculture. The Lowell Hardin Award for Excellence in International Agriculture was established this year. It's a new award, and it's to honor the legacy of Professor Hardin his contributions to international agriculture, and his many years of service and support of international activities in the College of Agriculture. The award recognizes significant contributions of College of Agriculture faculty members to international activities. The award recipients for the 2019-2020 inaugural year are Gabisa Ejeta, Distinguished Professor of Agronomy and the 2009 World Food Prize Laureate, Thomas Hurdle, Distinguished Professor of Agricultural Economics, Jules Janik, the James Troop Distinguished Professor of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture, Suzanne Nielsen, the 150th Anniversary Professor of Food Science, and John Sanders, Professor of Agricultural Economics. In just a few minutes, uh, I'll introduce each of them individually and present them with their awards and say a few words. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to say a little bit more about Lowell Hardin. And this year, in honor of the inaugural award and the naming of it in Lowell's honor, uh, a book was produced, a book of remembrances, uh, entitled Lowell Hardin, Mentor Extraordinaire. Lowell Hardin, Professor Emeritus of Agricultural Economics at Purdue University, was a great mentor, a trusted confidant, a wise counselor, an innovative leader to many at Purdue. Lowell was born in 1917, just a few years after this building was built. He graduated from Purdue in 1939 with a degree in animal science, attended graduate school at Cornell, and returned to Purdue in 1943. He returned as a faculty member in the Department of Agricultural Economics. He eventually became head of that department prior to his departure in 1965, where he went to the Ford Foundation to work as senior agricultural officer in their international division. These were in the early days of the Green Revolution. And while there, Lowell stood at the forefront of an international vision for research and development to organize agricultural sciences and to address the nation's concerns regarding hunger and poverty. After retiring from the Ford Foundation in 1981, Professor Hardin returned to Purdue as the Assistant Director for IPIA, the office that I now direct, a role in which he served until his 2007 retirement when he received the Professor Emeritus designation. Although Professor Hardin passed away in 2015, his legacy of loyal service, generous insight, and shared knowledge continues to endure across Purdue agriculture. And this award honors both his legacy and recognizes the achievements of those who follow in his footsteps. Our first award recipient is Gabisa Ejeta, Distinguished Professor of Agronomy and the 2009 World Food Prize Laureate. Throughout his career, Professor Ejeta has promoted science-based development and revitalization of agricultural research as a path to achieving food security, enhancing economic prosperity, and conserving natural resources. Gabisa has demonstrated through his research and advocacy that the results of research often generate greater impact through additional effort in community engagement. An important and ongoing theme of Professor Ajeta's research has been to promote those activities that have significant impact on addressing social needs. In recognition of his global impact and stature, in 2009, Gabisa was recognized with the World Food Prize, widely regarded as the Nobel Prize for Agriculture. Congratulations, Gabisa. Thank you. It's a great honor to be the recipient of this very special award. 
First of all, I would like to express my appreciation to the offices of IPIA, the College of Agriculture, and Purdue University at large for establishing this award in the name of Lowell Harbin. In my mind, Purdue honored itself by creating an award for service in international agriculture in Lowell's name. In his long and storied career, Lowell served the College of Agriculture at Purdue University, the state of Indiana, and the global agriculture research infrastructure and community with great honor and distinction. Lowell was an extraordinary man, a man of great knowledge, incomparable wisdom, tact, and grace. He was particularly gifted in the practice of institutional management and in harnessing collecting vision from those that aspire to serve the institution. He used this gift to guide and build institutions and programs and people around the world. Among his many personal attributes, I admired his dedication to service, his personal integrity and absolute humility. I was among those that were very fortunate to have had a close personal association with him and learn from him for a long, long time. According to Lowell's sharp, incredibly sharp memory, he and I met in 1980 when Lowell was head of the Ford Foundation's agriculture program and I worked as a sorghum breeder for Ekrasat in Wad Medani, Sudan, where I made a presentation to the Ford Foundation delegation that he brought to the country. He said that he noticed me then. As luck would have it, a few years later, he would return to Purdue after 17 years of his secondment to Ford, and he would serve as chair of the search committee that would hire and bring me back to Purdue. It became my great fortune then that he would become my friend and mentor for over 30 years until his death in 2015. It's a good feeling now to be associated with him in legacy through this award as we had in life. Finally, let me add that it is also a great, it's my distinct honor to share this award with my four colleagues receiving this award today, Tom, Jules, Suzanne, and John, whose work and services I've also admired. Thank you very much. Our second recipient this year is Tom Hurdle, Distinguished Professor of Agricultural Economics. Professor Hurdle has devoted his career to research, teaching, and engagement on a wide range of issues related to international agriculture. These include trade policy, poverty reduction, climate change, and environmental sustainability. He has founded, as well as led, institutions and projects that have served the global community of scholars and decision makers promoting international development in more than 170 countries. It is no exaggeration to say that Professor Hurdle is a global thought leader. And in this capacity, he has engaged and influenced thousands upon thousands of researchers and policymakers around the world. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you for this award. It's a tremendous honor for me to accept the Lowell Hardin Award for Excellence in International Agriculture at Purdue University. It carries a very special meaning for me as Lowell gave me one of my very first jobs assistant program officer at the Ford Foundation in New York. I sat in an office across from Lowell and learned by observation how he was able to foster a global network of social scientists working within the system of international agricultural research centers. His unique mix of written correspondence, personal visits and support for the scientists entire family was a brilliant recipe for mentoring young researchers for success and forging long-term collaborations. So fast forward a decade, and I found myself as a young faculty member at Purdue University. My landing at Purdue was no accident. Lowell had orchestrated the connection between myself and the department head in Ag Econ. At the time, I was grappling with a dysfunctional community of researchers working on international trade policy in the context of the Uruguay round of negotiations under the WTO. I decided to take a page from Lowell's playbook what I could create 
what if I could create a network of researchers with a different mindset, namely one in which global analytical databases and models were constructed in a collaborative manner and shared with others, and one in which key findings could be replicated and built upon for increased confidence and improved policy analysis. This was the genesis of the Global Trade Analysis Project, uh, GTAP for short, which has grown beyond all expectations to include more than 21,000 individuals in 175 countries. The 33 advisory board members provide leadership based on a robust governance structure informed by Lowell's days advising the consultative group for international agriculture research. He advised me in setting up this GTAP advisory board that has been so successful. But that was not the end of Lowell's influence on my career as my interests shifted from trade to climate and sustainability, I've drawn lessons from his emphasis on interdisciplinary research. Our new project, GLASS, which stands for Global to Local Analysis of System Sustainability, is fundamentally multidisciplinary with contributions from agronomy, climate science, computer science, ecology, engineering, geography, hydrology, political science, as well as economics. Class was dubbed one of Purdue's big ideas by the Discovery Park Competitive Grants Program, and it has subsequently attracted funding from the National Science Foundation, USDA, Department of Energy, as well as USAID. Most recently, we've won a five-year NSF grant to establish GlassNet, a network of networks. GTAP is one of eight networks in GlassNet, and GlassNet crosses disciplinary as well as international borders to address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, focusing on how they relate to the world's land and water resources and their interface with agriculture. I wish that Lowell were here today to share the celebration, but it is wonderful that IPIA has chosen to honor his legacy in this way, and I'm very proud to accept this award. Thank you. Our next recipient is Jules Janik, the James Troop Distinguished Professor of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. Professor Janik has spent his career both trying to benefit humanity through horticulture and studying how advances in horticulture through the centuries have already benefit benefited mankind. His dedication to Purdue University and the land-grant mission is unparalleled. As noted in one of his nomination letters, Seldom, if ever, has anyone made the breadth and depth of contributions to the field of horticulture as Jules has done. Whether a person is a professional horticulturalist or a hobbyist, in academia or in business, a breeder or a physiologist, an author or a reader, you likely would have heard about and benefited from Jules's multiple interests. Congratulations, Jules. Thank you very much. I am very pleased to be the, one of the recipients of the Lowell Hardin Award for Excellence in International Agriculture. I knew Lowell for many years. In 1953, 67 short years ago, when my father-in-law Irving Reisner visited on the birth of his first grandson, my son Peter, I took him to the O'Neill Farm for a farmer's meeting. Lowell Hardin, then a professor and ag econ, was one of the featured speakers. He was impressive as always. Late in his career, I often visited him in a small back room in the international agricultural offices in the experiment station building. He and Don Paulberg were my friends, as is Jay Ackridge today. I also knew all the other recipients for many years. I remember visiting John Sanders' apartment in Evra, Portugal, when we both were involved with Purdue Portugal projects at the invitation of Carlos Portis. I recall Gabisa Ejeta when he was a young sorghum breeder in Agronomy. I interacted with Suzanne Nielsen and her husband. I am acquainted with the Thomas Hurdle. My first extensive work in international agriculture was a two year stint at Visosa, 1963 to 1965 with the Purdue Brazil project. I remember Dean Butts telling Woods Thomas that he was to head up the international program in agriculture that would be on a par with programs in teaching, 
research and extension. At Vizosa, I accomplished my greatest feast, my greatest feat, teaching a course I didn't know in a language I couldn't speak. I also helped translate my textbook, Horticulture Science, into Portuguese, and that became my entry into editing journals of international prominence. I became part of the Purdue Apple Breeding Program and watched as one of our apples became the leading organic apple of France. I visited 50 countries and worked on various international projects. My most recent international project has been my marriage to an Australian, Patricia Ryan. I often reflected on how fortunate I was to become a horticulturist, to do my graduate work at Purdue and become a boilermaker for 70 years. I retire at the end of this year. I've received numerous honors, including four honorary degrees, Bologna, Lisbon, Jerusalem, and Cruz Napoca, that's in Transylvania and Romania, but none is as sweet as recognition from Purdue, a university I revere and love. Thank you very much. Our fourth recipient this year is Suzanne Nielsen, the 150th anniversary professor of food science. Professor Nielsen has long been a passionate and productive advocate of international research, outreach, and education at Purdue. She has supported these activities with impactful effort and service as a faculty member, as head of the Department of Food Science, and as a faculty fellow working to foster strong international partnerships and lead large project efforts in the international space. As one of Suzanne's many supporters highlighted, None of Suzanne's accomplishments are about Suzanne herself. They represent the outcome of a humble devotion to improving the lives of others, from the many students she mentored to countless stakeholders around the world, some of whom she never met, but who were touched by her work. Congratulations, Suzanne. Thank you, Jerry. To make sure I keep my comments to less than five minutes, I'm going to basically read some notes that I prepared, um, reflecting back on my work in international agriculture and also uh, remembering Lowell Hardy. I'm very honored and humbled to be among the inaugural group of faculty receiving this international award named for, um, for Lowell Hardy. I had an interest in international agriculture when I started as a faculty member in 1983. Um, however, without the support, opportunities, and encouragement that came from her many colleagues, nothing would have really come from that. Um, I'm thankful for the many people who facilitated um, my involvement in international agriculture over the years, thankful to the people that I worked with, um, and also thankful to the persons who provided letters of support for this nomination. I understand that latter group included um, Jeff Lansdale and Luisa Sorio at Zamorano University in Honduras, um, Rich Linton at NC State, um, B.B. Singh, who was previously at the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, IITA in Nigeria, um, Akina Desino is currently at the African Development Bank, and Ken Foster, our um, interim department head of food science. Again, thank you to all of them. As I reflect back over my years of involvement in international agriculture, I'm remembering um, an interaction and friendship with um, Larry Murdoch in the mid 1980s. It was um, from conversations with, uh, with Larry that I really kind of framed the question of uh, why legume proteins seem to be more digestible by insects than they were by, by humans. I was interested in the nutritional quality of legume proteins, especially and utilization of those. Um, so working with Larry was, was great and the colleagues that he interacted with. It was Larry really who introduced me to Lowell Hardin. Lowell offered much encouragement and advice um, and he facilitated opportunities. It was Lowell's IPAA seed grant in 1985 that really got me started. Um, a few years later, it was also Lowell who connected me with BB Singh at, uh, at IITA, the cowpea breeder there. 
Um, that led to years of, of collaboration and joint, joint research efforts. It was that work really that gave me the credibility then to become a part of the Bean Cowpea Collaborative Research Support Program, the CRISP, uh, funded by USAID. Working on the CRISP for 15 years um, and serving a couple terms as the chair of the technical committee gave me really valuable experience. Experience that was really helpful when I um, became department head of food science and uh, later when a team of us put together uh, and led the USAID Food Processing Innovation Lab, the FPL. Quite recently and um, at the university level, it was Suresh Garamella, uh, Purdue's former executive vice president for research and partnerships, who took me on as a faculty fellow for over six years and gave me the opportunity to work on a number of global projects. Most memorable for me was uh, managing Purdue's strategic partnership with Catholic Relief Services. And then later working with Carolyn Wu uh, to organize the Scale Up Conference. For one area of my international involvement, um, I need to jump back to the mid 1990s and recognize the opportunity that Phil Nelson and Vic Lechtenberg gave me for an initial trip to Zamorano University in Honduras. That trip was really the springboard for decades of interactions with Zamorano University. Um, and that continues even today. Phil Nelson also directly or indirectly created other opportunities for me related to international activities. Directly, um, Phil allowed me to start Purdue's involvement in the World Food Prize um, Youth Institute. Um, indirectly, when Phil assigned me to, um, to teach the class food analysis that came during my first week on the job, um, he set me on a path that led me to editing a food analysis textbook, a textbook that's now used in a number of countries around the world. Both of these are stories too long to describe here, but again, my thanks to, um, to Phil. I would be remiss if I didn't also thank Jay Ackridge. Jay involved me twice in leading the international team for strategic planning within the College of Agriculture. I remember one specific recommendation our team made, and that was to create a college level award for work in international agriculture, um, just like it exists now for research and teaching and extension. Under the leadership of Jerry Shively, this award came to fruition um, to help encourage faculty for years to come to work in international agriculture and to honor the memory of Lowell Hardin. Larry Murdoch and Tom Hurdle um, certainly got it right with the title of their book about Lowell Hardin, Mentor Extraordinaire. But even that is an understatement for, for what Lowell Hardin gave many of us who have worked in the area of international agriculture. Thank you to IPIA for this award and thank you to Lowell for his, um, his encouragement, his mentorship, his making things possible for those of us who wanted to work in international agriculture. Our final recipient of the 2019-2020 Lowell Hardin Award is John Sanders, Professor of Agricultural Economics. Throughout his impressive career, Professor Sanders has made numerous impacts on international agriculture and systems, from introducing new sorghum, millet, and cotton technologies to training and mentoring numerous African and Latin American students. Throughout his career, John has led international research programs in some of the most difficult settings, places with great needs, but also tremendous challenges. That he has led these efforts to success with such dexterity is a testament to his outstanding academic knowledge, but also to his human touch. He understands cultural differences, which is essential to critical and critical to conducting international research and field work. As one of John's supporters commented, when it comes to starting a job, John always displays an outstanding practicability and knowledge in the field that force admiration, confidence, and respect from everybody. Congratulations, John. 
Thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure to be here to honor Dr. Hardin. I first met him in 1973 in my first professional job in Fortaleza, Brazil. He was in the Ford Foundation then in New York, and he took his time to explain to me what Ford, some of the things Ford was trying to do. And I felt uh, I, it, it was a good feeling somebody that high a level at the Ford Foundation would, would come down to, to Fortaleza. Later, about 11 years later, I had been working in Brazil and then Colombia and then Portugal. And I came back to Purdue. And by that time, Dr. Hardin had resigned and we renewed our acquaintance and he helped me various times helping set up seminars across campus and making suggestions about things that I might be involved in. Just a, a sharp resume of what I did do at, at Purdue is um, when I was initially hired, they, they hired me for either working in Portugal or Burkina Faso, they had two contracts. So I ended up with very enjoyable two and a half years working in Portugal after Colombia, because Portugal was a lot quieter and more polite than, than well, not more polite, but quieter than, than Colombia. Um, <clears throat> then I came back to, to Purdue and in 1985, I was asked to be the economist on an international program of five universities uh, to mentor and train agricultural scientists in Sub-Saharan Africa and Central America. And I spent the next 20 years doing studies for them and also working with, on other contracts with AID and advising graduate students and teaching international development. And then in 2004, a good friend of mine from Insurmil, uh, a PhD trained agronomist who was from Niger, he left his job working at ICRSAT. ICRSAT is the International Center for Semi-Arid Agriculture. And, <clears throat> and he and I decided that, okay, we've been evaluating or working on other people's projects. We would develop our own project to identify and try and diffuse technology, agricultural technology for sorghum and millet. He was a millipeter and I had been working in sorghum and we had very good relationship for, well, what was it? About 12 years before we ran out of money and, and the Sahel, Sahelian countries erupted in a kind of either a civil war or people also call it a terrorist invasion, but it, it became very difficult to work there. But I had a very good experience with Purdue and I'm retiring shortly and it will be uh, very good memories of the, the friends I've had and, and the people I've worked with. Please join me in congratulating this year's award recipients. I think you'll agree with me that they set a very high bar for accomplishment and excellence in the College of Agriculture. It's unfortunate that we had to do this ceremony virtually. It would have been much more enjoyable to be together. And I do hope that next year, when we present the 2020-2021 awards, that we will be able to gather together in person. Thank you.